So this is what we're dealing with under our little temporary covers that we made in the late spring here while we kind of saw what the winter did to the side of the deck here. We knew this deck was older, but this is the only part where it's soft, clearly where there was no overhang and we had probably something was sitting there a wet mat years ago before us, I'm not sure. So Philip's gonna tackle getting this fixed up. So we have enough wood here left from another project to fix it so we can get all this capped and fixed up before we can roll the paint and make the deck look beautiful. I also used an outdoor mat before winter so that our steps were not slippery and they've now gotten so much wear on them over winter. They just kind of crumbled since they got so wet over the seasons. So we're gonna take this up and we got a new mat to be able to put on there because it really was a nice way to keep the stairs not slippery without having to put that salt stuff on all winter. It was really nice, so we're gonna do that again. This is starting to get really bad, so we're kind of taking care of them right now. Yeah, we put that temporary over it just to make sure no one fell through for a week or two while we were trying to figure out exactly what we were going to do. And if we were going to be able to do a whole deck build this year, which we're not going to have time to do. So the way lumber prices are right now, I think we hold off till next year and hope that prices go down. Walk with me, lead the way I will Making a secret little room under the deck. <laughs> Can't help each other through this ever changing weather. Explore every bend of the road to get That is where it looks solid, right? Yeah. Philip's putting in some extra supports at the bottom so that he has something to adhere the new boards onto from those joists that were already under the deck. He's just building off of it. That way we'll have nice strong support, especially when that's the walkway of the deck. Philip has all the pieces cut. It's so nice to work outside when the sun is shining. Oh, my gosh. oh what a relief to have no rain for a couple of days, and be able to get this project finished. See how I did that with the candle the other day. Okay, so I have two lowers in place. Now I'm gonna assemble the uppers and then move on to the next section of cabinets. You need a drill. You need a drill. Just try not to let it fall into the porcelain sink. So in order to hang the upper shelving that we're doing on either side, we're gonna have to take down this drop ceiling, otherwise we can't get up to the eight foot mark. It's more the sink piece, like if it falls down, I don't want anything to fall on the sink. They used the longest, thickest screws. We're getting close to the sink, I know. <laughs> You're making me nervous. Over the sink. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I'll just put like a piece of wood over it. Yeah. Can I put this stuff in the sink? Yeah. Just yeah. And then maybe one of the boards by you there. Just kitty corner right across. Just in case. I doubt it would chip from a screw or something falling. I mean, it really shouldn't. It's thick, thick like a bathtub, but. Why well, scratch it if we don't have to? Well, I need to stand on it anyway, so that's perfect. On the sink? Oh, yeah, right, you're so funny. <laughs> Cheeky smile. <laughs> oh, YouTube family. We have been wanting to take down this drop ceiling. 
I think since the day we moved in and it was thunderstorming. <sighs> Way to go. Here, I should probably help you. <laughs> but as I mentioned in a previous video, this drop ceiling is coming down, but we can't do anything to cover the ceiling until all of this bathroom plumbing has been rebuilt and redone when we do the bathroom. So we're gonna be leaving the ceiling exposed just for a little while till we get up into that bathroom space, but the rest of the pantry room can get finished. So we're gonna put the cabinets to the height and then know that we still have headroom for the ceiling later. Bye bye, ugly drop ceiling. Right. It's rusted, it's old. Luckily we didn't have to take the panels that were in it because they would have been wet and disgusting, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Especially because we had that water in when we got here. I worry if you <laughs> snip too many of those yeah. wires, this is just and gonna fall down. Just, falls. just be careful. Got the red wire. Got the green wire. <laughs> I don't like the sound of the steel rubbing. Ugh. <laughs> Strategic cutting. <laughs> Which wire do I cut first? Do I cut this wire or do I cut this wire? If I cut this wire, does all of it come down? Uh, possibly because I only see two or three other wires on this side. <laughs> Pressure is on. Yeah. No. I'm going to cut. Like we're playing that. What's the game where you pull the pegs and all the ball things fall down the middle of the center thing we played with the kids? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you just hold your breath and hope that all of the things don't fall through the middle. <laughs> Break your washing machine at this point. Mm -hmm. I have everything off to this point. Now I just need to. I think I just need a screwdriver to do it. When I was building the kitchen cabinets, I didn't create any uppers. I just created some floor to ceiling pantries and lower cabinets. So these are actually my first install for the upper cabinets and they're going to go above here. We're gonna have uppers here and then uppers as well on this side. We're gonna have some open shelving, but most of these are gonna be closed off. And then we're also gonna have storage for uppers on this side. gonna cry when you're gone I'm still in my work clothes from today. 
I still been covered in sawdust. I haven't cleaned up any of the mess from cabinet building today. And I should be going to bed to start because I have more building and cabinet assembling and renovating and everything to do tomorrow. But my creative brain is not turning off. Please don't be mad at me. <laughs> okay, so as you know, I started painting some of the tiles on the backsplash year. I found a pattern that I really liked. I used my Cricut cut machine to be able to make the stencil, to be able to duplicate it onto the wall using the colors that I thought I could tie in with some of the yellow that we love, the blue grays and things and colors that are going to match the gold and the dark kind of blue gray that's on our washer and dryer. That was two and a half weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I have five and a half <laughs> tiles painted. And I actually have a stack of the tiles that I already printed out or cut out on my cut machine, another dozen to get put on so that I can work on getting the back of this completely done. I really should have had that done before I started building anything here, make it a lot easier to put the stencil on, but I was procrastinating doing it. And I know when my brain is procrastinating doing something and I don't just get right to it, that it's not right. And I have to follow my creative journey on doing everything in our house here to make it the way that I know is going to be dreamy for us, exactly the way that our family wants it. And so because I hadn't finished it yet, I know it's just not right. But now tonight, I'm supposed to go to bed and I'm super motivated, even after we do, did tons of work today, because I had an idea that I think would be a little bit more us, and I did a little tester on the wall. Aztec pattern. We want to go with more of like the Navajo, sort of like, that southwestern style kind of patterns throughout the house. As you see, we have our sheepskin chair, our Navajo rugs. We have a little bit of that Canadiana vibe going on, as well as we want to keep things as sort of minimalist as we possibly can. And I know you guys suggested doing the pattern staggered throughout so it would be a little less busy, and it is a really busy print that I started with. It just isn't seeming right, and so I'm going to go with what I'm motivated to do tonight and what my creative brain is telling me Use the yellow that we're loving from the front door and do an Aztec pattern very minimally, not every tile on the back of this. So I'm gonna head to my cut machine, print out a bunch of stencils, and I'm gonna do the whole wall right now because I think this is the way to go. You guys be the judge. Okay, here we go. So this is what I have going on. This took me about seven hours just to do five and a half of them because I had to hand paint most of it and it wasn't just stencil. This one was just one quick coat over, so I'm going to now wipe this one off and do it for real and do the double coats on all of them. So because I'm doing every other tile, I can do what a lot of our YouTube family suggested by putting the stencil on every other tile so they don't you know, line up on each other or layer each other. And then I can sponge paint all of them going all the way across and then come back and do that second pass when it dries and then they're all done all at the same time. I think if I have almost 60 more tiles to do of this, never gonna finish it in the amount of time that I have to finish this project and I think that the yellow with everything that I have going on is going to be really beautiful and it's kind of all of our favorite colors so we're going with it take a leap of faith run with me clouds go by and Took the boys to swimming lessons this 
morning and came back and finished, which tells me this was the right thing to do. I was motivated to hurry up and get it done, not procrastinate and make the whole wall completely finished. And so it's done, it's drying. And then once it's totally dry, I can go, off, go over it with a couple of clear coats to make sure that it stays and it's permanent. You saw how hard it was for me to get off the other stencil. And so I think now this is gonna be pretty durable once we get the clear coat on and it's not gonna come off. I love that I staggered it. I took our YouTube family suggestion on doing the staggered pattern like you suggested with the other pattern that we started that it just wasn't right. And now I walk in and I love this. It's so much more us. It's the yellow of the leftover paint from the front door. So it didn't cost anything to do this. I used some of my Cricut vinyl some contact paper and that leftover paint and I was able to salvage those old original tiles from the house. I couldn't tear them down knowing that they were original I guess to the house for us and they were still in great condition and so I'm still going to take off these far end ones here before we hang our uppers which are already cut and ready to be installed. We have a lot more installing to do in this room so stay tuned for tomorrow's episode because if you think we got a lot done yesterday and today We've got even more time to show you for tomorrow to make progress on this pantry room. I love you guys. Thank you for cheering me on and we'll see you tomorrow.